Welcome to 2024. I am entering this year as an ambidextrous tennis player. And this footage, I'm not going to play too much, just a little bit for you guys to show you that I have indeed actually given this racket a chance. I've acclimated to all the little quirks of it. You can see me hitting here four hands on my dominant side, as well as four hands on my non-dominant side. And the advantage of two grips in some ways speak for itself, but it's not without some weird learning curves, possibly some cons. We're going to talk about that in this video, as well as a little bit of the history of this racket, advantages, disadvantages, etc. And ultimately where I'm at with my journey on having a left-handed forehand to replace my two-handed backhand. And for what it's worth, this footage is actually a few weeks older than the time of this upload. That is to say, things have gotten better. So I've been debating whether or not I should make a video about this racket specifically, or if I should talk about my interest in having a left and a right-handed forehand. That is to say, I want to eliminate my backhand, my two-handed backhand, and replace it with a lefty forehand. I'm a right-hand dominant player. An obvious struggle with the idea of doing that, put that down for now, is switching hands. How are you supposed to react in time and switch hands for either forehand, right side, or left side? Well, it turns out that that isn't as bad as I thought. I'm used to holding the racket like this, and for a two-handed backhand, my hand would just slide down. And for a forehand, my hand would just come off. But for a forehand on both sides, I've been playing around with grips and I have no idea what I'm ultimately gonna stick with, but I kind of have my hands in both positions and I have my finger on the left-hand side held in such a way that I can have both hands pretty much in the position they need to be in. And if I need to hit a right-handed forehand, I just let go. And with a left-handed forehand, I also kind of just let go. So we'll see. But before discovering this, and of course I'll get better at this technique with time, I really felt like that's gonna be a permanent handicap of having two forehands. And for me, that's where the real purpose of this racket came into play. Because I'd have a grip for either hand, right? There is no trickery with how I need to hold the grip. I just have a grip for both hands ready for a forehand either way. But the obvious curveball here is in the two handles. So let's talk about this racket a little bit because in a lot of ways it's not what you think and in some ways it probably is. These two handles are facing away from each other. In other words, they're not quite parallel, which means when you're holding the racket, the racket face is not actually at the same angle of the handle. I'll demonstrate this by putting this on the ground. You see the handle is at this angle, but the racket head is at this angle. So there's quite a learning curve just to adjusting for that angle. Additionally, the contact point is further in front of you because the handle is actually away from the racket. But having the racket face angle back a little bit kind of offsets that, but then you have to adjust to that offset by catching the ball earlier, and in my opinion, sort of over pronating your wrist. Now that's not to say that that's gonna increase the likelihood of injury, I'm not making that implication at all, but I'll come back to that point. The other curve is if you want to hit a backhand slice, for example, now the racket face angle is inwards, so it's the opposite angle. So that's just a lot of body mechanics and adjustments to make that are unique to whichever side of the racket you're holding. That's not gonna be the case on a standard tennis racket, so steep learning curve. Some people like this racket because you can hold it with both hands, which actually makes the racket incredibly stable, right? Because I can actually hold it here and here I have all this leverage. So it's really hard to twist the racket face, but I personally don't have any interest in doing that. My whole goal here is to have another forehand, not another two-handed backhand. So I won't get into using this with two hands. That's just not my goal with this racket. But that is the goal with quite a few people and the people behind this racket appreciate a lot of the advantages that might come with that. So that's not lost on me, it's just not within my interest to do so. Similar to with the racket face and handle being different angles, how would you serve with this racket, right? Well, you wouldn't want to serve with this hand like that because then you have this handle kind of coming at your wrist. But it would also be weird to try to serve with your racket face angle back Again, you'd have to overpronate, so the natural solution there would be to hold it on the inside handle. Again, which requires some adjustments, but it's fine. I've actually hit with this racket for quite some time, just to give myself enough repetitions to feel like I actually made the adjustments necessary to know if this racket or the concept of this racket is for me. 
So this racket is what it is, but the concept of two handles is its own thing. So I'll say that the racket's not bad. It kind of feels like a light pier drive. And while having two handles certainly does make the switching grips less stressful, I don't think it outweighs the learning curve and some of the cons I associate. So let's take all the aspects of the learning curve out of the equation and just talk about what I think is the most detrimental thing about the way this two-handle design is conceptualized. And it has to do with this angle. I like to think of things in the extremes because you get some solid answers sometimes. An example would be the conventional wisdom idea of lower tension means more power. That might be true, but if you keep pushing that boundary, eventually it's no longer true because if you string it, say, two pounds, are you gonna get any power from stringing it two pounds? So where exactly is it no longer true that stringing lower means more power? Because at some point, it is no longer true. And it's probably before you reach zero pounds or two pounds or maybe five pounds. Anyway, a similar truth that I've discovered with this racket is that it's harder to generate topspin because the racket face angle is actually tilted backwards. And the reason is that when you're pronating your wrist to get that topspin, and I am a very topspin heavy player, so I feel very affected by this, any degree to which I have to pronate in advance to compensate for this angle to make proper contact, it affects how much further I'm able to pronate my wrist. And a good way to think about this in the extreme is, you see how I pointed this out earlier, that the racket face is not at the same angle as the handle. It's actually faced backwards, right? What if, again, we're thinking in extremes here, what if I tilted this racket head back way further to the point that it was almost like a 90 degree angle? How then would I generate any spin? Because at that point, this motion would no longer create a brushing motion on the head. It would just spin the head like this, which means any degree to which this racket face is tilted backwards, it's leaning in the direction of doing that, which takes away from the spin potential. And that's actually one reason I found this racket to be a lot more shank prone than a typical tennis racket. I actually think this design might be a lot more intriguing for me if the racket handles were parallel to each other, as in the handles and the racket face were all the same angle. And I can already feel some criticism coming my way from people who use this racket or potentially make this racket. They might make the argument that I haven't made the proper adjustment or I haven't contacted the ball ahead enough in time. I don't think that's true. It's a hard thing to explain, but it's something that I intuitively understand. And I hope some of you guys can as well. But essentially, the way to maximize topspin potential via wrist pronation would actually be to have a handle and racket face parallel to each other. Because that means this motion that you're creating to cause topspin is maximized. Any degree to which the racket head is tilted back means that there's some compensatory movement you have to do to get that same brushing motion. You can see here how much that angle actually affects the spacing of contact on the racket. You can imagine here, if you look at the head racket with the pink strings, if I hit the ball right here, that is the face and angle of the contact point. But this racket would have to be more like this. So that's how far apart the racket would have to be to make the same angle of contact. But look at how the handle is. That's how extreme the difference in angle has to be. And that all comes down to your wrist. And when your wrist is holding a racket like this, you cannot pronate. See that? Can't do it. However, if my wrist is like this, look at that. In other words, any degree to which the racket face is tilted back requires my wrist to be more so in this position and any degree to which my wrist is more so in this position, I am very limited in my ability to create top spin. It's that, but also that the swing path in this direction is reduced because of that angle again. And that's ultimately why I can't use this racket. Additionally, at least for the time being, I don't feel like dealing with one handle and two forehands is so bad. Going into this, I know that this is somewhat uncharted territory, so it's not like I have a library of people to study who have really mastered this technique. In fact, having two forehands on either side is just something that gets shunned, or at least there's a lot of doubt that it's ever going to be viable. One, because nobody's really shown this to be possible at the highest level of tennis. Although I will say there is a kid who is very, very good. He hits forehands on both sides. But of course he gets a lot of comments like, oh, this will never be viable once he starts hitting at the ATP level and so on. But we'll see. We'll see. I think the advantages of having two forehands speak for themselves. And that actually comes down to why I have this ambition in the first place. I don't like the backhand. I think it is a mechanically inferior shot. And I think a lot of evidence for that is one, everybody complains about it. And two, it's such a common strategy to pick on his backhand, pick on his backhand. But you're so much more limited in reach 
and that affects your mobility. But even more than that, I just don't like how asymmetrical tennis makes you. And a lot of sports are like this, especially something like tennis. It is such a dominant arm sport, in other words. As in, the more tennis I play, the more right-hand dominant I become. And that affects my entire body because my entire body is centered around me being right-handed dominant. And tennis being one of the most physically demanding things that I do, and I play every day, it molds me more and more into being a right-hand dominant person. And I don't like that. So I've actually decided to use tennis to become more ambidextrous. But the further I've gone down this path, I realize I actually have to become ambidextrous to be ambidextrous in tennis. So it's actually becoming a whole lifestyle change. So at this time, I'm not really sure what to say about the freestyle racket. There are some people that have taken it relatively far. I mean, it's not as though nobody's seen this racket, but it's more of a meme in the tennis community. But there are some really good players who have used this. And if anyone's in the San Diego area and they play a lot of tennis, there's a decent chance that they've seen one floating around because that's where this company is actually located. Natural rackets. Really good people, by the way. I've talked to a few of the owners and they're all just really great people. So I hope my decision, at least at this time, to put down this two-handle racket interest I had doesn't disappoint anybody too much. I think I gave it a good shot and understand well enough for myself at least what the pros and cons are. They also offer the handle by itself, or the two handles I should say, in a way that can be attached. If you want to cut your own handle and kind of epoxy the two together, they provide a service to do that pretty reliably, I think. But I'd be more interested in trying this again if we get a version where the handles are actually at the same angle of the racket face. Because adjusting for a backhand slice and then adjusting again due to that angle on the forehand side, and then again for the serve, is really disorienting. And it actually causes quite a limitation on my angles because my backhand slices are all gonna have a huge bias in that direction. And I have to really turn my body or something. I have to do some really intense compensatory stuff. But it also has a strange leverage against the racket when the racket face and handle are at different angles. It just doesn't work as naturally. But there might be a degree to that which is always true just based on the fact that the handles are not on the same plane as the actual racket head. But it's that combined with the fact that the angles are different, it's too many things. And as I said, it introduces some mechanical disadvantages that are just fixed into the reality of this racket and therefore your tennis. But I don't want to make it sound all bad. Obviously there are advantages to having two handles if you want to talk about stability. I mean, this racket is pretty much unshakable on return of serves if you can get your mechanics down to hold a racket like this. There's nothing that will destabilize this racket when you have two hands to stabilize it from twisting, okay? So there's that. Obviously, if you want to switch hands, it's easier to do that because you have a hand on a handle already. Personally, I think those are the main advantages. The people at Natural Rackets have an argument to say about this angle actually being really advantageous on serve, but I guess I have mixed feelings about that, and I don't know if it outweighs the ways in which that angle gets in my way hitting regular baseline shots. So that might be all for me now. I'll make a follow-up video really soon talking more about what it's like being ambidextrous for tennis and having a left-handed forehand. But I wanted to cover this racket because this racket was definitely a big stepping stone in this journey because it was going to dictate whether or not I'm going to adjust to this racket or if I'm going to adjust to how I hold a regular racket because whatever path I choose, it's going to be a big adjustment. But for the time being, I think I'm happy with one handle. And I just have to ignore what other people say because most people have not traveled this path at all. So most people are speaking without any experience. And there are people who have made it pretty far into the ATP ambidextrously. But there's such a small sample size of people who have ever attempted. So what do we really know? There's almost no science or data on this. I believe there was a guy not too long ago that reached maybe somewhere in the 500s or 300s in the world playing ambidextrously which to me shows that it might be possible. And at this time, we have the number one ranked junior in the world playing ambidextrously. And if you're just asking me, I think the best possible tennis would be played with forehands on both sides. If you could have two forehands, I bet you'd like to. I know I'd like to, partly because I think it would be better, but partly because my body would be more symmetrical and more coordinated on both sides, and I'd like that. And maybe tennis will be a catalyst or a motivator to actually bridge that gap between my left and right side. And who knows how much better I'll get at switching grips. I mean, I haven't really been doing this that long, and I'm actually shocked at how good my lefty forehand is. That being said, I've been eating left-handed, brushing my teeth left-handed, throwing darts left-handed, picking up some extracurricular activities just to really give my left body a chance to catch up. So I've been putting in the work, 
but I haven't taken this seriously more than a couple of months and it's already come along this well. So at this time, I feel nothing but excited and encouraged to keep going because I can only get better from here and it's already going quite well. My ultimate test will be to see if I can keep up well with my buddy Felipe, who is currently a UTR 12, super high level tennis. I keep up with him quite well in regular rallies on both sides, but especially after switching to the lefty forehand to replace my backhand side, it is an obvious weakness. It's more so like I went from being a potential threat on both sides. Now I'm kind of lucky if I can hang and survive on the left side, but I've gotten some points here and there. And as I said, it's only going to get better. And I've noticed quite a few shots that I would never have been able to hit with a two-handed backhand because it's just mechanically not possible. I'll say this real quick, all right? Two-handed backhand, my reach is right here, all right? And then my range of motion is basically that, basically that. Now, let's say I'm standing here and I go to a lefty forehand instead. Look at how much further that racket is. See that? It means I can take it back further and also more forward. I can take it higher. I have just so much range of motion to work with. Let's see here, let's get into an extreme but realistic position, all right? I might hit a forehand like this. Backhand, look at how far away that is. That's the difference in reach. See my back and core in the same position? Yeah, huge difference. Look at all that reach I have. And that's not just here, that's down here, it's up here. And with my right hand able to stabilize me, I'd argue that I could even go further out because how would I do this with two hands with any stability? Anyway, I'll leave it at that. Stay tuned for my video on what it's like and the journey so far getting a good lefty forehand. All right, thanks for watching. This racket is strung with Toro Toro in the mains and Enso Pro in the crosses and a Gravity MP. Stay tuned for a review on this racket and these strings, all that coming very soon. And if you wanna see my review on the Titan machine, which I'm about to hit with, I was just waiting for the course to dry up that video is up as well. And you can get free shipping with my code. That saves you quite a bit of money. Extremely sophisticated machine. If you have the budget, I think this is the best one that you can buy. But I compare it to the Slinger machine where if you don't have the highest budget, that's probably the best one to buy. So I'm comparing the two best options depending on your budget. But if you have the money, go for this one. See you in the next video. Thank you, Thomas, for your support. I got matcha today, and I'm on my way to play some tennis. And if you want to support the channel directly by getting me a coffee, which I'll probably use to buy other things, but I'll make sure they're caffeinated, usually, I will shout you out in a future video. So thank you for the direct support, Thomas. Appreciate you. And link to buy me a coffee below in the description.